Well, thanks for tuning in uh, to Talking Point today. Um, and I'm your host, Neera Chan. The Talking Point today arguably has to be uh, about what caution should an investor place into his portfolios while buying into the market right now, considering that all of the last few years' history has shown that there are times when firms that you buy and get your house on do not necessarily turn out the same way that you would expect them to be. And at times, there is very little support uh, from uh, the powers to be as well with regards to such uh, developments. So put that into perspective. And of course, talk about the markets at large uh, is Ajay Shivastava of Dimensions Corporate Finance. Ajay, so good having you. Thanks so much for taking the time out and speaking to us here on the talking point. Neera, good, good morning. morning. Thank you very much, sir. Um, Ajay, just a brief uh, uh, view first uh, from your end on what do you make of the bounce that we've seen in the markets of late? Mm -hmm. and what does that tell you about what the returns in the near to the medium term could be like? Well, Neeraj, I think, you know, as we always say, history repeats itself. <clears throat> we went to the high because of liquidity. We've recovered because of liquidity. At both points of time, the fundamentals were far apart with the reality on the stock market, which continues to dog this market because, uh, you know, we are an animal of liquidity. At the end of the day, 20 stocks drive up the market and 30 stocks and the rest try to catch on. So it doesn't matter. And the retail public then comes in the last leg of the rally at this point of time. So I would be very circumspect at this point of time with quite a bit of this rally because we are walking into a scenario which is one is uncertain. Number two definitely looks worse. And I am not even talking of Corona impact. I'm talking about pre-Corona where we were with the market and the economy. So while we may get excited, promoters will goose the stock, saying shipments are going, etc. There will be a little fill up in the capacity. I think take it down the line of three months and the results, you'll feel a very sobering reality coming into the picture. Having said that, there are silver linings. And I think silver lining one is very much discussed now. The rediscovery of the pharma story is being, uh, I talked about and the agriculture story, which should be reasonably well. But I think where the urban India is concerned is going to be quite a bit of hell to pay for some very long time to come. And I think market, of course, as we cannot argue with the market, we should ride the momentum. But market, as always, is fueled by liquidity, global liquidity, local liquidity. Because, Neeraj, people have nowhere else to put money in. Every that becomes 3 4%. So everyone is in the equity market at this point of time. And I'm sorry to say the media is, is very good at telling us where the market is from the high point till now, how you made 30%, 40% return. But no media tells the investor that, guys, you were at 12,000, you, you went to 7,500, you lost almost 50% of your portfolio. So the media bias also is coming into play. So I would say be circumspect, be sure why you're buying. Your pharma portfolio is safe, agriculture portfolio is safe, but rest is, I think, up in the air. Okay, so let's make this conversation about two talking points, Ajay. One is agriculture, because pharma, I think, Everybody's spoken about it till then. Let's dwell a bit upon the agriculture piece that you spoke about. And then, Ajay, I want to spend some time with you talking about, uh, you know, a couple of aspects. One, the kind of uh, riffraff that rises when the tide is up. And two, a, a lot of stocks which have sunk when people have bought them, as I introduced the show. And what can be done about some of those? How can investors safeguard? Because clearly the other safeguards are not working. First, the agriculture board. What are your thoughts there? I mean, it's a very wide bucket. How do you play within the markets with it? See, unluckily, Neeraj, it is not a wide bucket. You know, India, unfortunately, we don't have too many companies to invest in. Achha, you, know, I'm a list you know, to that extent that in the agriculture side, all the biotech companies are sitting in the U.S. So you, nothing much is in India by and large in the listed space. What you have really is one listed company called UPL, which we have for reasons of disclosure. So I'm not suggesting you buy. But I think that's the largest uh, agro uh, uh, kind of a company in this country. Rest are very small. Some are seed companies. Some are little fertilizer. Fertilizer goes up and down with the government policy. So to choose from the segment, you're really left with three things. One is a tractor story, which can come around and it's coming around quite nicely. I think that's one story which has played out pretty well for most investors. And the second is the agrochemical story, which is playing out through a select counters. I think that is looking reasonably well at this point of time and with locusts and pesticides and insecticides kind of industry. So there is a company called Insecticide India. There is a company called UPL, etc. So <clears throat> you have to space in the agrochemical space. You got to play in the tractor space. You got to pay in the rural themes which are coming around, which are on the retail financial side, 
whether it's a gold loan company which are prevalent mostly in rural areas and semi urban areas that's the place to go to uh, i would also say look at some of the rural consumer teams are fine absolutely although some of them have not done well imami for reasons of performance and other imami is a pure rural team and so is dabur primarily and both companies so far have not done well so at least imami has lot to catch up with in terms of stock market performance if they improve so i would say consumer things like you saw what happened to parle ji deliveries etc i think consumer which goes into the rural india agrochemicals fertilizers i would stay away because we don't know what the government policy is going to be financial services and certainly tractors i think these are the four things unfortunately it represents the last segment of the economy but in terms of pure pay agriculture companies you don't have many to play with yeah just a quick follow up ajay there uh, some of these uh, well discovered and have a lot of other pieces to themselves besides indian agriculture upl for example right or for that matter as you said you staying away from fertilizers but pockets like sugar have a lot of government intervention and um, companies which catering to the tractor space aside of the pure play tractor companies the financiers have the other auto financing pieces as well which might hamper them so uh, how do you distinguish when when you are distinguishing how do you distinguish between the safest versus the most obvious see it's very simple you go down the hierarchy you you know in agriculture a pure play like an escort tractor is a pure play of cost tractors and ancillary instrument they got nothing else in the play and with the kubota investment coming in they became stronger the share price has shown the resilience in the market mm. as you already seen it right so i think you have a pure play uh, this thing unfortunately mahindra has got too much of baggage so they have a wonderful tractor business but you just can't go buy into it because there's so many more things they do which is nothing to do with tractor so to that extent you get circumscribed that is one tractor company in the country which you can actually buy into UPL we mentioned because UPL is a good play because not only domestic it's also 50% global play and everywhere agriculture is a holy cow so you are pretty safe in terms of them and it's a essential commodity etc etc so you are pretty safe in that segment so i think you go down the hierarchy and you don't have to go into kind of a mix you know you are a company of insecticide we just spoke about which is focused on agrochemicals so and unfortunately you're right a lot of them are mixed bag a lot of them agriculture chemical companies also do pharma so that's a good match if you have to ask me so apis and intermediates could be a good match uh, gold loan companies i think could be kind of surrogate to the rural play agriculture play to the large extent they are little urban as well but i think primarily rural i think you also go down to things like micro credit company like ujivans of the world and bandhan which are i think primarily agriculture or if not agriculture alone a uh, agriculture related semi urban play so you got financial sector which has got two three players very focused agrochemical very focused tractor very focused and i think it's a reasonable portfolio you can build around them my last question on this before we move on ajay uh, and again there are no certainties there are no necessary long term bets but i'm just trying to figure out when you are looking at that space right now are you allocating a certain percentage of your portfolio to some of uh, to a mixed set of these companies and do you believe this is um a one two year play or is it difficult to say that right now no i think it's a uh, you know this is place where i'm very comfortable to say neeraj you right with all the hesitation to say this is a very good long term play because mm. we know for sure that this is one place where at least government of india is not going to fiddle around this too much of an electoral thing sitting there for anyone to touch this play and uh, so far is done reasonably well you know the procurement has been good and they get the money immediately through the food corporation so the unlike rest of the industry they don't have to wait for money they go to the bank state bank and pick up their money or whatever local bank is so i think it is a very safe place to be the only caveat and i think that's the only caveat is this government policy and that's where the problem comes you know you suddenly saw in the middle one direction coming 20 items will be banned now this suddenly you found that all the agrochemical space upl stock crashed everybody was in a tizzy what's going to happen now then it settles down and says okay no no it's a show cause notice we will see so i think the unpredictability of government policy to me is the only variable which hits the investors more and more now in india than just the understanding of long term potential so unless some bureaucrat wakes up and decides that 30 more things need to be banned i think you should be okay or maybe tractors are bad one day somebody will wake up and says tractors are bad for land because of substitute manual labor and so there we go put some duty on tractors so we pay for uh, labor you know if that kind of idiosyncrasy comes in policy then you can all bets are off but otherwise i think you are okay with it for even 3 to 5 years okay 
Now, uh, the next talking point on this conversation, Ajay, is what do investors do, do to safeguard themselves? So one in terms of buying behavior, two in terms of monitoring portfolios. And I've got uh, two sets of examples here. Let's start off with the first one, something that I think you and I spoke about before the show, right? I mean, sets and sets of companies which seemed all okay, and now there is just no hiding space for the investor. I mean, we can name names like Cafe Coffee Day was an example, PC Dwellers, Reliance Communications, etc. What does one do? Well, if let's say you are invested in these companies, what do you do? And two, how do you safeguard yourself? Well, I mean, what do you do as somebody who's managing public money uh, when you are trying to invest? How do you safeguard? What are the checks and balances that you're putting in place? You know, it's a very uh, kind of a tricky point because and you know typically one answer would be that you look at in promoters and decide that where you want to put your money that's your first test it's not company it's not business it's not fundamental it's not balance sheet you look at promoters and say is he good enough to invest the problem is if you look at the companies just name whether and i'll add a company called eros onto that one i'll cox and kings etc i look at reliance for communication if you look at the number of promoters who are involved in these companies they were pretty okay at the point of time when the share prices were doing well the problem is investors are holding the can and the promoter is enjoying his life. Mr. Anil Lambani is happily sitting in his house without a problem in the world and the investors are holding the can. We don't know what's happened to Eros, why it went from 500 to 11. We don't know Cafe Coffee Day, what was transpiring inside. Of course, you know, sadly, the gentleman is not here, but at least the company was there. There was a board there. At the end of the day, there were the independent directors there on the board of the company. We saw what happened in PNB. We saw. So my question is only to investors is, that India, the risk reward is against you for these companies because the regulatory apparatus has failed us. Name, I am not sure. I tried to do research. My team did. How many insider trading cases do we see in India at all? Hardly, never. We never see any action on any promoter. On all these companies, I can tell you, are reft of insider trading. And a good example I can give you even today. The results get declared at 1.15. There is a trade in the market at 115 one second responding to the result. What does it tell you? It will take you at least five seconds to at least open the result and read the result. How could a broker or a customer trade within 30 seconds of the official time of the results of which you come on the BSC site or the NSC site? So therefore, investors should know that the market is loaded against you. Unfortunately, regulatory apparatus is not going to safeguard you and therefore, the true test, if you ask me for the thing is that do you understand this business, one, and number two is, are you comfortable in this kind of companies with the extent of a portfolio not more than 5 to 10%? And, and let me be honest, we are not geniuses. We have invested in Cafe Coffee Day at a point of time and lost a packet of money on that. So it's not that I'm speaking from a, a pulpit and saying, listen, I never did any sins of this kind. We have been equally victim of some of the shares like this. But I think the test is to see that are you comfortable and why are you investing in anything which is B grade or C grade in this country? I think it doesn't matter what the returns is. You just have to test yourself that is my B grade or C grade good enough in my portfolio and is it more than 5 to 10%? If it is more than 5 to 10%, I think you just get out of that place. It didn't seem B grade or C grade when anybody bought it. That's the problem. Okay? Well, you know, that's what I said. Just in now, a lot of them. That when yeah, I, no. But my point is this, right? That on hindsight, one can figure out that, yes, it was uh, a false alarm or, or, or a false uh, fruit looking dangling out there. How do you figure it out then? And therefore, would percentage portfolio allocation into mid-caps be a limit of your percentage of your portfolio? Is, would that be a strategy? Okay. I don't want to tarnish mid-cap as a, as a segment. No, but I, I'm I would just saying, say, yeah. Unknown you know, names, but I would, say, I would say, yes, that's a prudent way. At least India has worked. Not only India has worked, globally it has worked. The only difference is that globally you do what you've done in India, you will spend 30 years in jail. There's nothing else you can do about it. Whether you are ahead of McKinsey or whoever you are, it doesn't matter in the US industry. And that's why capital market is healthy. In India, last, when did anybody go for jail for falsification of accounts or okay. insider trading or anything? Or you know punitive damages and so on so that's why i said indian market is the highest risk market on the mid-cap side for this reason that there is no penal action awaiting the promoters who do wrong in these companies 
and therefore when you say ki you know yeah these guys were respectable ambani's were respectable you're right cafe coffee day was a known name you could see everywhere uh, pc jewelers was known we don't know why the share price is where it is today we don't know why eros cinema with so many rights is at 15 or 18 rupees we don't know any of these things and therefore one tends to wonder that where are the regulatory authorities sitting and like trying to at least keep the hand hold the hand of investors and says if anybody pays hooky with you we will take care of the person or we will ensure that penalties are large so it's a peril but the, i think the test of identification is and i think that's a key test is that when suddenly the share price spikes up and you cannot find a fundamental reason for it don't ride the momentum i think that's my true test always has been true that suddenly the company made a loss but the share price went up by 20% and people pile on that's the first sign of that things are not looking good you got to go with the fundamental for mid cap not the momentum and liquidity unlike the large cap where if fi is buying if aberdeen tomorrow places a billion dollar order it's a more kosher order than a broker playing 20000 shares of a illiquid stock so the first sign i would say to investors is if it's gone up against the fundamental of that stock that's the time you take off yourself of the bandwagon not get on to the bandwagon is just a small disclaimer here uh, this conversation is not about trying to figure out what went wrong with each of those individual pieces and what the regulatory action could be uh, this conversation is not for that it's trying to point out the larger uh, canvas around which things are happening and the other question ajay uh, on that uh, which is the talking point and my last question on this interaction is what to do with some of these stocks uh, which are really rising multifold in this current uh, plow back as well i think the obvious answer would be to stay wary but a lot of investors get caught into this like this is the list of names which have given returns uh, these are filtered by market cap of maybe less than 1000 crores or 500 crores either of the two but just look at the kind of gains that have happened a one month total returns or three month total returns 300% or uh, 200 300% for a defense technology systems world day science is up 200% some body scan corp 200% i mean that a clutch of these names uh, in global markets as well as the indian markets which are just moving up like there is no tomorrow i mean so this is i mean it could be an example of across the board uh, across markets really but what do you do with some of these names i think you need to see again i keep saying investors you need to calm yourself with your actual experience in the last most people are experienced in the market some are new in the market youngsters but most people experienced in the market would tell you how much money you actually made over a decade or two decades with any of these kind of stocks as a portfolio you know it's all 200 300 is all right but remember most of these stocks at least in india you will find circuit filter circuit filter circuit filter up and then there'll be 20 circuit filters down and you'll never get out of it ever so they look very attractive they look they're very good for insiders who know when to get out the you get in very easily into this stock but the when you how do you get out when you look at a circuit filter every morning 5 10 20 whatever the circuit filter applies and you cannot get out so the key question to yourself is that is this stock liquid enough for you to get out if you think and you think you are smart and alert sure come to the party but if you think the liquidity has hampered just look at the last two years liquidity suddenly you'll find 2000 2000 2000 shares and some 20000 shares come two days you know that when you want to sell there will be no 20000 buyers sitting for you so i think a test is look at the volumes and look at circuit filters carefully you need to be careful that exit is driven by circuit filters in most of this stock and you will not be able to get out so the trick is 20 30% don't look at 300% i would say if you get 30 40% return in this stock book it get out when you can the right is always good in this stock when it is up on the way down you'll be left holding the can because circuit filters will not let you get out so find liquidity indicator first then the price indicator yeah i mean look at the indian list too and stocks that have really gone up and one wonders why some of these do of course there are more hands at play and at times not just retail investors but that list showed you i mean the edicoms and the powers of the world the kind of gains that they've had but ajay yeah, thanks so much uh, for speaking to us you're welcome thank you and highlighting some very important points that people should be aware of about thank you say say and viewers thanks for tuning into this edition of the talking point